Hello and welcome. I'm Kevin Cirilli. The coronavirus pandemic has brought the U.S. economy to a standstill, causing unemployment to triple in less than two months. President Trump and Congress have already passed nearly $3 trillion in economic relief, including an estimated $700 billion in payroll protection funds. They say it's aimed at rescuing the country's 30 million small businesses, which make up half the U.S. economy. Washington remains gridlocked on how to chart a path forward. In this special report, we'll dig deeper into the unemployment data to see just how quickly the U.S. economy can rebound and what the new economy will look like. Plus, we'll get a first-hand account from one small business owner struggling to keep her business funded. We begin with a closer look at the federal government's response. I spoke with Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia in Washington. This is a very, very difficult situation for uh, the American people right now uh, with uh, tens of millions who've been put out of work. But what makes it very different from, say, the Great Depression is that uh, it doesn't result from underlying economic problems. It was uh, a response. We've idled our economy temporarily in response to a health crisis. So uh, I think in some ways it doesn't help to compare it uh, to the Great Depression. We, we do have to remember how strong our economy was. Um, so President Trump, Congress moved extremely quickly to provide relief like unemployment benefits, like the Paycheck Protection Program for working Americans. We're uh, at the Labor Department working uh, very hard to keep workers safe as they return. Uh, but I, the most important thing I do believe is uh, safely reopening, uh, as so many states are now. And, uh, and as we uh, safely reopen, keep in mind that fundamental to a strong economy is going to be not too much government intervention. Let the private sector do its thing. And what specific indicators are you looking for as signs that the economy is getting back on track? Well, uh, we're watching for states as they reopen. That's a sign that people are uh, going back uh, to, to the workplace. Uh, and I'm seeing early data indicating that, uh, that uh, there's a pickup in um, certain economic activities. Uh, we, we do know that people are going back to work. I'm keeping an eye on that. I, I am watching these unemployment filings. They're uh, hard to watch, hard to see. But as they uh, slow down, we know that's a sign. Uh, that uh, uh, fewer people are being put out of work and that uh, things are starting to turn around. Is the post-pandemic economy going to be dramatically different than the pre-pandemic economy? It'll be different. We, we know there'll be differences. I think one will be in our supply chains and some of the uh, economic dependencies we have. Uh, uh, I think uh, there's a new uh, understanding. China. I think there's uh, a new understanding of problems in China. Uh, lack of candor. Uh, on top of other uh, problems with their uh, uh, economy, with the uh, lack of transparency of uh, some of the companies in China. We made a change uh, earlier this week with a, a planned investment of federal pension assets. This was going to be a, a change that would have resulted in federal retirees' pension money, even military people being invested in, in uh, Chinese military companies. Uh, the president directed that not go forward. I think that's part of a broader reconsideration of some of our economic relationships and a recognition of uh, we need to strengthen American manufacturing to help protect American jobs. As CEOs make cuts to keep their companies afloat, unions are calling for greater workers' protections. I spoke with AFL-CIO President Richard Trumpka about what the labor group's 12.5 million workers need to feel safe when they do return to work and what lessons can be learned from the pandemic. I think it's demonstrated the weakness in on not only the supply chain, but in our national security. Yeah. It's shown how vulnerable we are as an economy to outside people, especially uh, China. And I think the result is going to be people are looking at more insourcing right now, and you're going to see more jobs come back home because Americans can do them more effectively, more efficiently, and quite frankly, they can do them more cost effectively. Do you think that this pandemic and the economic crisis that has spawned as a result of it has exposed the differences in terms of inequality between white collar workers and blue collar workers? I think it's going even more than just white collar, blue collar. It has exposed that difference, but it exposed a number of structural deficiencies in our economy. Uh, the lack of opportunity, the lack of health care uh, for people of color. Uh, for women, uh, for single parents. Uh, those have all been exposed. 
And this offer gives us an opportunity to start addressing those structural inadequacies. And so when people say we want to go back to normal, our, our response is normal is not good enough because normal showed us those inadequacies. We want to go back to something better where the economy really does work for working people and not just that 1% at the top. 